Puritans congregate in their tens of thousands in Trafalgar Square to witness the launching of its greatest savings effort, a target of 150 million pounds for wings for victory. Centerpiece is a Lancaster bomber, which spreads its wings over the rostrum from which Sir Robert Kindersley speaks to the greatest assembly of people in the heart of London since the coronation. This campaign will give every free citizen of this free land an opportunity to express their admiration of and gratitude to the men of that superb force to whom the many owe so much. These Wings for Victory Weeks are the nation's salute to the gallant men of the Royal Air Force, of the Fleet Air Arm, and of the Allied Air Forces. In announcing the opening of the Wings for Victory campaign, I shall release 1,300 pigeons, each bearing a message to one of our 1,300 savings committees throughout the country. These winged messengers, many of whom have seen war service, will, I feel sure, prove to be the harbingers of complete and outstanding success in this great campaign. Pageantry is added to the splendid occasion when later the biggest and bravest procession of the war swings through London streets. At the head, detachments from the Royal Navy leading the several elements of the senior service. The Lord Mayor takes the salute from a dais near the Mansion House. Here are smartly marching wrens in the procession as it heads down Queen Victoria Street. Behind them in civilian clothes march the heroes of the convoys, the men of the Merchant Navy. Ununiformed servicemen with a record second to none. Then comes the army. Long columns of men marching six abreast in this mile-long lunch hour display. comes the star attraction, the men of the RAF, who by their round-the-clock air offensive are winging their way to victory. It is their day, a day when Britain salutes the pilots and gunners, observers and navigators, wireless men and ground crews of the Empire. London alone is backing them up 150 million times and more. This is no newly found gesture of confidence. A national debt of gratitude started on September the 3rd, 39, and we who saw them win the Battle of Britain will never let them down. We too have a target. We're out to win those wings for victory. It's essential to every air operation supply a novel feature to wind up the parade. A mechanized column displaying some of the many and varied aspects of specialized work in the RAF. Unlike most processions, the sting is in the tail. The exhibits which excite the crowds are the bombs, ranging from the juniors to four and eight thousand pound blockbusters. A certain poetic justice for bomb-battered London to parade a few samples of the hardware which will lift the lid off some Nazi dump in the very near future. <laughs> 